Hello everyone from TLAC, it's Mr White here and I'm going to do you a history video and today's video is going to be all about shields in history. Now we know that the Iron Age ancient Celts had shields because there's a lovely example in the British Museum but unfortunately I don't have one of those. But what I do have is possibly the most iconic shield that everyone thinks about and that is the Roman shield. I know that our year fours have made some lovely examples of these last term and maybe that's something you could do if you're at home looking for, for some activities. The Roman shield or scutum, as you can see, was huge. It was curved, which meant that if you threw things or objects at it, it did at least take some of the blow away and not push it straight onto the arm of the poor person holding it. Um, had a boss. Um, had these wonderful, these are eagle's wings and lightning bolts, which are a very Roman theme, theme of uh, um, success and victory. And it was held like this to cover the body. You could have it down, down. And obviously when you've got lots of Romans together, um, the scooter could be added together to form a nice shield wall, or even the famous testudo or tortoise shape, where you could hold it up. But it was also used for whacking people which is why it had this big metal boss there, so you could really use it for hitting people and whacking people. And even along the edge, which as you can see, would have had protection along it, um, would enable you to use that to, as, as a weapon as well as to shield yourself from things being fired at you. It was held with a single handle across um, in your left hand, because your right hand was used for the sword. Now, once the Romans left, the Saxons arrived and during the Dark Ages the shields that were used were round shields. Generally called Saxon round shields but in reality they were used by all of the different tribes that uh, were living in Britain at the time, Saxons, Dukes, as well as Vikings um, and everyone else around. They were round shields, they were used in exactly the same way but they were more about sort of um, charging and using in, in battle. Once again, they had a big boss, big metal boss for hitting people. They were usually made of elm. They were painted with various decorations. This one is actually an Anglo-Saxon brooch based on an Anglo-Saxon brooch that was found about 500 yards from where I stood um, in Windsor. Um, they had a leather edging, which uh, meant that if you did hit it with a sword, because um, obviously that's what, what would happen with shields, it would stop it splitting because it was made of um, elm planks, so that would give it ed extra protection to stop it splitting. So, Saxons would paint um, tribal images, tell you who they were, um, be able to identify you in battle. So it was a bit like having your football kit on. Everyone knew which side you were on based on what you had on your shield. Now, eventually the Saxons shield gave way, once again it was handheld, but it gave way to a slightly different shield, once again used by the Saxons and everyone else in the 11th century, but it is known as a Norman kite shield or a teardrop shield. Obviously everyone would have just known it as a shield at the time. And this is a Norman kite shield. Um, as you can see, they were widely used at, uh, if you look at the Bay of Tapestry, wildly used in 1066. And the main difference between this and the normal Saxon shields, which were still in use at the time, was that it was much longer and was therefore used to protect your legs. So if you, were, you could use it to protect your head, but also deflect blows from the legs, and the shape did make it actually quite useful, um, because you could use this when riding a horse. And that's because of the biggest change. The boss got much smaller. Some of them don't even have bosses, so it wasn't really used in the way that the old bosses were used, but uh, it was still there. But the main change was the way it was worn. It was strapped onto the arm, which meant that you had your hand free. And the hand could be used as a really useful, um, to hold a second weapon, or in particular with the Normans, they were really good at cavalry. Um, so they would be riding horses. And if you've got one of these shields, with your hand free, you can hold the reins and ride a horse, as well as protect your legs. And once again, like all shields, you could use it to protect yourself from incoming missiles, like arrows. Um, if you're being hit, so incoming javelins or um, something like that would, would protect you from. And obviously, sword and shield blows. 
Now these once again would have been painted with your tribal shield or uh, uh, colours etc. But that's a job I've still yet to do but no doubt I'll get there at some point. Um, so maybe when it's painted I'll bring it in and you can see it. So eventually these wonderful shields gave way to the classic medieval heater shield. These are the classic shield shapes that everyone's seen and heard of and everyone immediately thinks of when they talk about shields. They were made of wood or metal, this one's wooden and is a crusader shield because it's got the red St George's cross on it. Once again these were strapped to the arm and they were expected to last one or two battles if that. They weren't, they were quite disposable items really. Um, they carried on with the lever to stop them getting split um, and uh, were really useful, had to be smaller, more lightweight, could be used on horseback or to fight with, but these were, were very popular shields. Um, the shapes did change a bit, slightly curved to deflect blows, whereas the, the Saxon shields had gone very straight and very flat, um, and were the classic shield everybody thinks of. Now, this is your international colours, this is like your England shirt, but obviously different families by this time we're having their own coats of arms and this shield once again is a heater shield but this one is my coat of arms maybe what you could do if you want to is look on the internet see if you can find out what your family coat of arms looks like or what your family crest or shield might look like and if you haven't got one you could even design it because all the colours and the symbols actually had meaning. So this one is the white family one, it's red which is the colour of war and bravery and warriors, it has golden lions on it and um, uh, symbolising the fierceness and battle, um, fighting and battle but it also has this chevron um, in the shape of a roof which symbolises protection and looking after people and the blue and the white are purity and honesty, so the colours all mean something, and that is the white family shield. So maybe you want to see what your family shield would look like, and maybe even make yourself one. Now, the final kind of shield I've got is one of these. These were used from the 11th century through to about the 16th century, and it's actually called a buckler shield. Um, not very good in big mass battles, you're much better using one of the bigger shields for that. But these were used for single combat or if you were fighting one on one or fighting in a combined space. So they were really, really useful, um, particularly on board ships, hence the, state, uh, the film Swashbuckler, which is an adventurer, someone who fights and is adventurous, but basically it means someone who uses a shield like this. These were used in five different ways. Firstly, they were obviously used to protect yourself from incoming sword blows. Um, they were used as an iron fist to punch people with. They were actually used to rush up and push people so you could actually squash someone with it and then obviously use your sword in there as well. And the other great use was to actually disguise your hand. So you basically hide your hand so that the person you're fighting doesn't know where the blow is actually going to come from because the shield stops them seeing where you're putting your hand. So really nice shields. They kind of lost, lost it in about the 16th century, 17th century, um, when people really did stop using shields. And the reason they stopped using shields was because they weren't particularly useful at preventing one of these firing at you. So they got, went out of use, and now the only people who use shields tend to be policemen, on riot duty, but even then they use shields like the Saxon one, like the Roman one, and they use them in exactly the same way. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short brief history on shields. If you have, let me know via the messages. If you've got any questions, please let me know via the messages, and maybe we can do another one on helmets or swords or other things um, later. So goodbye from me, and let me know how you get on, and if you are making your own shield, and take a photo and show me some pictures of it. Bye!